Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the next edition of the alternate series. We're jumping back to 1921 for this one. The top two teams in the NFL. What if they squared off in modern football to determine who the champion really was? The Chicago Staleys were named champion in an era where you didn't have championship matches. The championship was voted on and teams could manipulate their schedule to get that better winning percentage. The Buffalo All-Americans in 1921 finished 9-1-2, and two, while the Chicago Staleys finished 9-1-1. One one. So by virtue of a half game, which ties did not count in the standings until the 1970s, the Staleys were awarded the championship. So, <clears throat> if you haven't seen the alternate series, it started out as just the alternate Super Bowl, the two losers of the conference championships from 1966 on. I made about 14 games in where I decided to backtrack to 1920. After 1920, I thought, well, let's just do the playoff years. So I went forward to 1946 where there were two leagues. Well, I'm going back to 1921 now, and I'm, I'm going to stick through it. But it's going to be more than just the what-ifs from the two runners-up. It's There's is going to search uh, a, a champion of any possible championship matchup now 1921 there was no championship so I'm stretching here by just picking out the uh, top two teams and for the Chicago Steelies I'm using the Chicago Bears the team that actually is descended from that team then for the Buffalo Americans obviously I'm using the Buffalo Bills why did I choose to put them all in red I don't know something different I don't know what the All-Americans wore I'd have to look into it, I suppose. But it is, if you've never seen any of the videos on this channel, like Sack to the Future, Blast in the Past, or this, it is Gridiron History. Modern football, but using classic rosters. Now, obviously, if I had to choose, I'm going to take the All-Americans because of the connection to Buffalo. Researching for this era was a little bit difficult, other than the roster is up on Pro Football Reference, but they didn't wear jersey numbers. And not all positions are listed, not all positions are the same. Some people didn't even have heights, weights, or, or ages, so this is just a, a hodgepodge of uh, guessing on some aspects. I'll do the best I can to keep up with calling the action. The Chicago Staleys and the Buffalo All-Americans set to kick off. And the Steelies will kick it off first. The All-Americans will get a crack at the ball. Waddy Kuehl on the return from the one. And Waddy Kuehl is all the way up to the 30. In his second year out of St. Ambrose. Here's a look at the quarterback. Oki Anderson, number one. The second year player out of Colgate. A 5'9", 165-pound signal caller. Don't pay attention to those stats. Stats weren't even kept in 1921, so we're not going to worry about that. The numbering system is based on the position 1 through 11, and then they're matched up 99 through 89, and then everybody else is given a jersey number. The kickers are 12 and 88, and 13 through uh, 27 and 87, but vice versa. Anderson's going to get hit, and he's dropped. He is stacked by George Hallis. The Papa Bear comes in and is frozen in time. Not sure what's going on there. The referee looking at him. Are you okay, Papa Bear? Of course, they didn't call him Papa Bear in 1921. In 1921, no. George Hallis was only 26 years old. So on second and 20, Anderson back to pass. He throws his complete to Usher. And Usher breaks free. Usher's got the first down. I look down and try and look up the guy's first name, Eddie. Eddie Usher on the reception. 31 yards. Let's take a look at the replay on this one. As Usher catches the ball and then breaks the tackle 
and keeps on a trucking before finally being brought down by number 98 Ken Huffine Minton he broke the tackle of Big John Minton and kept on a going first and 10 at the 45 Anderson in the shotgun again because that's what they did in 1921 actually they did they didn't have the regular center snap Tommy Huget on the carry loses the yard and the tackle is made by George Hallis so it'll be second down and 11 Hallis that time did not freeze in place Anderson gives to Tommy Huget Huget tries to make a move but he jukes right into the tackle the oncoming tackle Now let's take a look at the Bills' starting offense. Lud Ray, Bob Nash, Bill Brace, Swede Youngstrom, and Lou Little. Tommy Huget, Waddy Kuehl, Luke Urban, Heine Miller, and... I missed the fourth guy. Which probably be number four. Elmer Oliphant. Anderson back to pass. It's setting up a screen. It's complete to Huget. And Huget is hit right away. He does pick up two yards. <clears throat> but the tackle is made. And it'll be fourth down and nine. Harley on the tackle. Here's a look at the screen pass. He was hit right away and only picked up two. Schick Harley on the tackle. Going for a 61 yard field goal attempt in 1921. That's unbelievable. The kick is long. It's low. And it's good. My goodness. Oliphant kicks the ball through. What an amazing 61-yarder by Elmer Oliphant, the second-year player out of Purdue via the Army. And Oliphant kicks it off. What a strong leg for a player from 1921. And then he kicks that right through the end zone. So the, the All-Americans have taken a 3-0 lead on the, the Staley's. And here comes the quarterback, number one. Hard Pierce. Hard Pierce starting his second straight alternate Super Series game. In his second year out of Penn, the former Quaker. He's short. He is only five foot five. Trying to see over that offensive line that ranges an average of five ten or so. Pierce gives a handoff to Ken Huffine. Huffine is going to get hit in the backfield and drop for a loss of one. as Bob Nash makes the tackle. You will be seeing these teams again in the blast for the pass series when we get to the second round. Park Pierce back to pass, he throws, he's hit as he throws, it's incomplete. The All-Americans have come to play today that the, the, hi Stonewall, the Chicago Staley's are the higher ranked team. Here's a look. Ralph Scott, Tarzan Taylor, George Traft, and Russ Smith, and Hugh Blacklock. Guy Chamberlain, Dutch Sturman, Ken Huffine, George Hallis, and Pete Stinchcomb are the starting offensive unit for the Chicago Staley's. Pierce is in the shotgun. Takes a snap. He's looking to throw. Throws it over the middle. It's caught by Guy Chamberlain. And Chamberlain busts free and gets up to the 49. A pickup of 24 yards. And it'll be first and 10. In case you're just joining us. Oliphant of the All-Americans made a 61-yard field goal. Pierce fakes the handoff. He's looking to throw. He scrambles to the right. He dumps it over the middle to England. And England breaks free but not very far Harry England if you've ever seen Harry England you might not want to stick around second down and one for the Staley's Pierce back to pass throws it dumps it over the middle to George Hallis and the founder of the NFL picks up the first down and Pierce has started out three for four and they're in the all-american territory at the 34 yard line Pierce hands it off to Ken Huffine. Huffine breaks the tackle. Huffine's got the first down. Nice run by Ken Huffine. The, the Staley's have now amassed 52 total yards. Most of it on this drive. And on November 24th, the All-Americans defeated the Chicago Staley 7-6 in Chicago. 
Huffine takes the handoff and he's going to get up for a gain of one. But then in the rematch on December 4th, also in Chicago, the Steelies won 10-7. Lou Little, Bill Brace, and Swede Youngstrom, the front line for the All-Americans. Bob Nash, Heine Miller, Herb Stein, and Luke Urban at the linebackers. Pat Smith, uh, G, uh, Hokie Anderson, Tom Huget. Excuse me. Pierce hands it up to Huffine. Huffine is hit in the backfield and dropped. And uh, all Americans are gonna come back up the line. Third down. I mean, the Staley's third down. Eleven. Heine Miller on the tackle. Really put his rear end into that one. Pierce back to the pass. He throws a dart. It's intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone by Johnny Scott, the second-year player out of Lafayette. And that stops the Staley drive. And the All Americans. They're just gonna say his momentum carried him in the end zone, and he's down at the one. Pierce heaves up a prayer, and Johnny Scott is Johnny on the spot as he picks off that pass that was intended for Pete Stinchcomb. As you see, Johnny high points the ball much better than Stinchcomb tried to. It is first and 99, basically, with 8.01 to go in the first quarter. You are watching the alternate series from 1921, the Chicago Staleys and the Buffalo All-Americans. Hokey Anderson in the end zone. He's got plenty of time. He throws it to the flat, and it's caught by Voss. Tilly Voss out of Detroit. Most mercy, the rookie makes the catch, but he's only going to pick up a yard. And look at the Staley's defensive unit. Russ Smith, George Trafton, Tarzan Taylor, Hugh Blacklock. Linebackers, George Hallis, Ralph Scott, and Guy Chamberlain. And the secondary. Dutch Sternemann, Part Pierce, Ken Huffine, and Pete Stinchcomb. It is second and seven. They're going to say that uh, that uh, Voss made three yards on that, but he's out to the three. That ball was just touching the goal line. There's the handoff to Milhouse. There's a flag down. As Andy Hillhouse, but there's going to be holding the rookie out of Brown. Holding is called on Lou Little. The right tackle, number 11. <clears throat> It'll be second down and nine. Anderson hands it off to Hugit. Hugit's going to get hit in the end zone. They're going to say he was out to the one. So it'll be a fourth down. No, third down and nine. I forgot the penalty. Third down and nine right where they started. And Hugh Blacklock on the tackle. As Anderson is in the in the pistol formation now. Anderson hands it off to Hugit. Hugit running. He's got, gets out of the end zone. He's going to pick up a yard. So they only pick up one for the punter. Elmer Oliphant. Short snap. Gets the punt away. Nice. Boom and punt. All the way back to the 30. 75 yards in the air. But Sternman makes one man miss. Makes the second. And then it's just drilled. On a 14-yard return by Dutch Sternman. And the Staleys will take over. After the Pard Pierce interception. In the, on the one-yard line. The Staleys had something going. And it's first and 10 at their own 46. What a punt by Elmer Oliphant. Pierce hands off to Huffine. Huffine's going to drag a guy. He's going to pick up five. And it'll be second down and five. Ken Huffine in his second year out of Purdue. Former Boilermaker. Pierce back to pass. Throws. It's caught by George Hallis. And Hallis is going to pick up four. But he's just going to be shy of the first down. And that'll be a third and one. Pierce hands it off to Huffine. Huffine looking. He gets through. Gets the first down. Makes a leap. He's still going down to the 30. A pickup of 31. A pickup of 14 yards. And a first down for the Staleys. Oliphant on the tackle. Oliphant's having himself a game. 61-yard field goal. 75-yard punt. Pierce hands it off to Huffine. And Huffine. Oh, Huffine has stood up and dropped. Pickup of four before Bill Brace makes the tackle. Pierce going up under center. Hands off to Huffine. Huffine's got the first down and then some. He's going to get down to the 20-yard line. <clears throat> Oki Anderson on the tackle. Just inside the 20. First and 10. 3.22 to go in the first. 
Pierce back to pass. Throws it. It is intercepted by, guess who, Oliphant. Elmer Oliphant making a hard case for MVP. Unfortunately, he uh, can't uh, combine all four of his different uh, characters. But he is definitely, in our minds right now, the early candidate for MVP of this game. Elmer Oliphant. Back on the one, though, where the All-Americans were in the last drive. They only picked up a yard total. Anderson hands it to Hugot. Hugot's got a couple. He's out of the end zone. He's going to get up to the four. He's going to pick up three yards. Here's a look at head coach Tommy Hugot on the sidelines. It is second and seven. Anderson hands it off to Hillhouse. Andy Hillhouse. Andy Hillhouse picks himself up five yards. It'll be third down and two. Andy Hillhouse, the rookie out of Brown. Wants himself a bear. Brown bear. Third down and two. Anderson hands it off to Huget. Huget picks his way for the first down. Pick up of three yards. Tommy Huget, the head coach slash running back slash secondary man. I think I just skipped the Bears defense, so I'll go over it real quick. Lisa Names, Part Pierce, Ken Huffine, Dutch Sturman, Pete Stitchcomb, Guy Chamberlain, Ralph Scott, Tarzan Taylor, George Trafton, Russ Smith, Hugh Blacklock, and George Hallis. Anderson hands it off to Hillhouse. Hillhouse picks his way forward for two yards. And it is second down and eight. Hugh Blacklock. Blacklock tackled Hillhouse. Not Millhouse, Hillhouse, in case you're... Wondering, Anderson back to pass. It sets up a screen. It's complete to Huget. Huget's got the first down and then some. Uh, picks up a block and Tommy Huget could be gone. He's inside the 50 to the 40. He gets by him and oh, he's just caught from behind at the last second by Dutch Sturman or else he was gone. 63 yards on the rack plus the pass. Actually, the pass was behind the line of scrimmage. So it's probably 63 yards. Look at this as he just weaves his way, picks up the block, gets by one and it looks at first like he's going to outrun Dutch Sturneman, but Sturneman dives and catches. Otherwise, it would have been an 88-yard touchdown pass. First down and 10 off the tremendous play by the All-American. The future Hall of Famer Dutch Sturneman makes the tackle. Anderson takes the hand off to Huget. He's looking. He steps up. He throws. It's caught by... No, incomplete. Incomplete to Heine Miller. It would have been uh, the former Quaker, much like the Bear quarterback Quaker. Second down and 10 now with 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Anderson back to pass. Anderson dumps it over to Heine Miller. Heine Miller is run over at the 20. <clears throat> he picks up about seven yards. And that, folks, is the end of the first quarter as the Buffalo All-Americans lead the Chicago Staley's 3-0 thanks to the power of a 61-yard field goal by Elmer Oliphant, who is right now making a strong case for most valuable player of the game. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by so the All-Americans start going the other way now, third down and three. Anderson back to pass. Throws it, dumps it over the middle to Urban. He gets down to the one yard line. So Eddie or er, Luke Urban makes the catch, the rookie out of Boston College, and ironically, they are now right where they started. They started on this very one yard line on this drive. And can they go 99 yards? Ken Huffine made that tackle. It is first and goal from the one. Anderson hands it off to Huguet and he is demolished in the backfield. The monsters of the midway stepping up and making the tackle. Russ Smith on the stop. A loss of three. It is second and goal from the four. Anderson changing the play. He hands it off to Huguet. Huguet sidesteps a man. Huguet is going to get down to the two yard line. Picks up two yards. He's got eight carries, eight yards so far on the day. Not a very good average. Ken Huffine makes a second tackle, and it is third and goal from the two. 
Anderson taking his time. The Bears are stacked. They've got a wide open player. But instead, it's a running play to Huget. And he finishes off the 99-yard drive. Tommy Huget takes it in for the score. The 29-year-old running back out of Michigan, the former Wolverine. And it is a 99-yard drive for the All-Americans. And Elmer Oliphant hits the extra point, and the game is now a 10-0 Buffalo All-American score. Oliphant kicks it off. It's a short kick taken on the four by Dutch Sternman. Sternman brings it out to the 25. He's to the 30. Sternman breaks the tackle. He gets away again. He's over the 35 to the 36-yard line. 32-yard return for the Dutchman. First down and 10 for Pard Pierce, who's thrown two interceptions, both on the one-yard line. And Pierce is back to pass. Throws it over the middle, complete to George Hallis, who makes the spin move and gets the first down. And Hallis to the 47. And a first down for the Staleys. That's Hallis' third reception. Here in the NFL second season, ironically, today is 99 days to the opening kickoff of the NFL season for 2019. As uh, the pass is dumped over the middle from Pierce to George Bolin, rookie out of Purdue. And in my one of my Facebook groups called uh, NFL Fanatics Club, I'm going to try to post a, a, a post every day getting us that much closer. Pierce, fumble! It's fumble and picked up by the All-Americans. So the day being 99 years out, Bob Nash on the recovery had posted the 1921 season and a thing on the 1921 All-Americans. So Bard Pierce has now accounted for three, three turnovers by himself. The Bears might want to start thinking about their backup quarterback. Anderson back to pass. He steps up. He's going to dump it over to Tommy Huget, and Huget's going to pick up four yards. Okay, Anderson, 7 of 8, 123 yards, and there's a look at Tommy Huget on the sideline coaching the Bills as he's also playing in the game, too. Because that's what we do with this. We're try to, we try to make it work. you got to use your imagination, little folks. Anderson, it's a little bit of a high snap. Hand off to Huget, and Huget's going to go backwards. He loses 3 yards. So it'll be 3rd down and 9. The Bills have run 12 times and passed 8. Or the Bills, the All-Americans, I should say. Who are these Buffalo Bills I talk about? Anderson picks the handoff with a lob pass. It's intercepted. Part Pierce getting one back for himself. So Part Pierce has turned the ball over three times, and now he just got one back. And it'll be a first and 10 for the All-America, or the Staley's, on their own 16-yard line. <clears throat> Pierce back to pass. Throws it. It's caught by Pete Stinchcomb. And Stinchcomb picks up eight yards. It'll be second down and two on the 24 for the Staleys. Pierce hands it off to Huffine. And Huffine can't get through the line. He's going to uh, no gain. It'll be third down and two as Heine Miller makes the tackle. It's Miller time, boys and girls. Second and third down and two. Heine Miller's fourth tackle on the afternoon. Pierce hands it off to Huffine. And Huffine again is not going to get through the line of scrimmage. Again, no gain. And the tackle is made by Luke Urban. Luke. I am the tackler. It is fourth down now. As Dutch Sturman will punt it away. Calls for the fair catch, but it's going to bounce. It's going to lay dead at the 7, and that's where the Staley's will down it. So, well, they went 99 yards on the last, well, not the last drive. The last drive was an interception, but two drives ago. Can they go 97, 90, no, 93 yards? First and 10 from the 7. So after Anderson's interception, Anderson fakes the handoff to Huget. Standing in his own zone, he dumps it over to Smith. Smith's got the first down, and he's going to get out to the 27-yard line. Pat Smith, the second-year player out of Michigan himself, a former Wolverine. 
along with Tommy Huguet. Makes you wonder if they came together. Huguet, oh, he is leveled. We're gonna lose a yard on that. Back to the 26. George Hallis with a dub, 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 devastating hit. He clobbered him. Anderson hands it off to Huguet. Huguet busts to the outside. Huguet switches the ball. He's trying to get away from another. He's going to end up with no gain on the play. Pard Pierce stepping up to make the tackle. Nope, Ken Helfine. Sorry, I read, misread the number. It'll be third down and 11. Anderson in the shotgun. He's back to pass, throws it. It's caught by Elmer Oliphant. And Elmer Oliphant, he does everything. Elmer Oliphant down to the sideline. And a touchdown for the All-Americans. Elmer Oliphant, 74 yards. He kicks 61-yard field goals. He punts 75 yards. He intercepts the ball in the one. And he goes streaking down the sidelines. Ladies and gentlemen, Elmer Oliphant. If he's not the MVP yet, I don't know who will be. Anderson throws it to Elmer Oliphant, and it's just speed on speed as he outraces Pard Pierce, coming trying to get him, but Pard Pierce cannot get him, and Oliphant crosses the goal line for the touchdown. And now Oliphant comes back on to hit the extra point, and it is 17 to nothing All Americans. So back to those two games they played. The All Americans won the first game 7 to 6. The Steelers won the second game 10 to 7. By virtue of those two games, the NFL did, well, it wasn't the NFL in 21, it was the APFA said that the Bears were two point or the Steelers were two points better than the All Americans and thus were awarded the championship. Sternman from the goal line, he brings it out. He's up past the 30 up to the 32 and that's where Pard Pierce will once again try and make something happen. Hard Pierce has just been harassed. There's the fumble. Two interceptions. He has one of his own. First and ten. Pierce back to pass. Throws it to complete to Bolin. Bolin over the middle. Knocking down all Americans like they were stacked up in a triangle. George Bolin. Picks up seven. Pierce back to pass. Throws it over, throws his man out of bounds. It'll be third down and three. Pat Smith on coverage. Pierce again overthrows his man. He's all of a sudden 8 of 13, 81 yards, 2 interceptions, 1 fumble, and Sternman will punt. And it's going to go into the end zone and come out to the 20 where the All-Americans will take over. First and 10 from the 20. Anderson in the shotgun. <clears throat> Everything's going right for the All-Americans. Huguet on the carry. Huguet's going to spin his way for four yards. 13 carries, 10 yards. Everything's going right for the All-Americans except for Huguet's rushing average. Second down and six. Huguet on the carry again. Huguet's got a huge hole this time and a first down. He's going to pick up nine yards, and now his rushing average is starting to get positive. 14 carries, 19 yards, one touchdown. 5.30 to go in the first half. All Americans bunch to the right. Anderson hands it off to Huguet. Huguet, he stood up and can't get any further. He does pick up three yards on the carry, though. And now Huguet pacing back and forth on the sidelines, trying to figure out how he can break some tackles. Ken Huffine makes the tackle. Running back on running back there. Anderson. Hands it to Huguet. Oh, Huguet. Nice move. Just gets by a man. Picks up 10 yards of the first down. Right, 
Anderson gives it to Smith. Smith weaves his way down to the 49-yard line to pick up a three. Anderson hands it to Smith. Pat Smith carries for three more yards. It'll be third down and four. Anderson looking. Throws it over the middle of Hugit. Hugit's got the first down and a pickup of seven yards. Anderson looking, throws it over the middle, overthrows everybody. It's second down and ten. Anderson looking, throws, incomplete. Anderson back to pass on third down and 10. He's got time. Is that guy can hold that block there. He's got it forever. Almost towards the interception. Well, well, if anything we've seen though out of here is that these things tend to tend to um, even themselves out sometimes. This time this will be a 54 yard field goal and it's good the 56 yard field goal sorry I think the 56 yard field goal yes for Elmer Oliphant and that's two huge field goals over 50 yards both 56 and 61 taken by Sternman on the two he's going to bring it out past the 20 to 25 and he is leveled right there First and ten for the Staleys. Ken Huffine has ten carries for forty yards so far. Pierce fakes the handoff, rolls out, throws. It's caught by Chamberlain. And Chamberlain's gone. 74 yards, but there is a flag down. Let's see what the call is. If it's holding, it's coming back. Yep. Yeah. It is a hold on the offense, so. And it'll back the Steelers up to the 16 yard line. <clears throat> And we have reached the two-minute warning with the All-Americans leading the Staley's 20 to nothing. Kicker has an unbelievably strong leg. I don't know how I uh, tagged that or rated that, but... Pierce hands it off to Sterneman. Sterneman, oh, he, he shifted right into the oncoming tackler. Pierce looking to throw. It's caught by Sternman. He picks up a yard, and the all Staley's are going to use the timeout. Pierce looking to throw. 
It's caught by George Hallis, and Hallis picks up two, and uh, all Americans will have to call another timeout. Sturman. It's a low punt, low snap, but he gets the punt away barely. It's going to bounce and go into the end zone. So the All Americans will take over at the 20. Minute 29 to go before half. Anderson's in the shotgun. Second down and 10 after that play. Anderson back to pass. Throws his cut to Hugot. Hugot's going to pick up the first down at 12 yard gain. The Bills are the All Americans are the one calling timeout. I, I mistook the blue color because I got them wearing red. Anderson looking to throw. Throws it over to Usher. Usher picks up the first down. <clears throat> He's up to the 46 yard line. Anderson looking. That ball seemed to sail out of his hands and goes incomplete. Anderson throwing over the middle. Almost intercepted. Pass intended for Heine Miller and it falls incomplete. It'll be a third down and ten. Anderson looking, it's complete to Usher. Usher's got the first down. And he's tackled inbounds with 23 seconds to go. And they're not rushing. They're going to let time tick down. Evidently just going to try and go for a field goal, I would imagine. Three, two, one. Not sure why they didn't try for the field goal. It's complete to Oliphant, but they just wasted a chance at a field goal. So at the half, the Buffalo All Americans lead the Chicago Staley's twenty to nothing. And Oliphant kicks it off. It's into the end zone and out. So here's a look at Dutch Sturman. He's ran the ball one time for six yards. Pierce comes up under center. He throws off his back foot and overthrows his man. There's Elmer Oliphant on the coverage. Right, 
Pierce hands it off to Huffine. And Huffine is hit as soon as he hits the line. Huffine down on the line. Third down and nine. Third and nine at the 26 yard line for the Paul oh, Staley's. Looking to throw. He is scrambling, throws it, and it is knocked away. It'll bring up a fourth down. Sternman gets the punt away. It's taken by Kuehl on the 15. Kuehl makes a man miss. Kuehl makes the three more man miss. Wadi Kuehl all the way up to the 39-yard line from the 15. A 24-yard return. Hugo takes the handoff and he's going to get nowhere past the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 now. Hugo on the give. Tommy Hugo carries his way to the 49 and a first down. And all of a sudden, the, the, the All Americans are just demolishing the Bears defensive line. Anderson hands it up to Hugot. And yeah, Hugot's going nowhere. She can't get around their end. Second down 11 as Anderson hands it off to Hugot. And Hugot again can't get by the 49 as the All-American seemed to have stalled. Anderson with a major rush. Hugot on the screen pass. Hugot's got the first down and then some. The All-Americans are just dominating this game. First down and 10 now for the All-Americans. Throw, it's caught by Urban. And he's gonna pick up nine yards. It'll be second down and one. Anderson hands off. Waddy Kuhl's got the first down. And Waddy Kuhl picks up seven yards on his first carry of the day. Anderson back to pass. Oh, he's going to be hit and dropped. Guy Chamberlain gets the sack. And it's second down and 17. Hugo, he's going to be hit in the backfield and loses a, a 
Third down and 22 all of a sudden. Anderson looking to pass. He's going deep toward the end zone. Touchdown on third and 22. Oki Anderson finds his target. What not very well covered. He just put it the only place it could possibly go. Heine Miller. No, no, that's Urban. Sorry, Luke Urban. Makes the reception at five foot eight. It somehow drops into him. And here's the extra point. And ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a blowout. The Buffalo All Americans lead the Chicago Staley's 27 0 in the third quarter. It looked like the Staley's are getting something. They were pushing back. They had gotten a sack, <clears throat> and all of a sudden, just boom, touchdown. Pierce looking, he throws, intercepted, just picked right out of the air by Heine Miller. He just reached his hands up and took it away from him. And that is the fourth turnover the All-Americans have received, all thanks to Pard Pierce, giving the ball to the All-Americans all afternoon. Hugot gets a little spin, picks up three yards. He's got 42 now on the day. Anderson looking. Throws it complete to Elmer Oliphant. And he gets up to the 16. It'll be third down in inches. Anderson back to pass. Dumps it over the middle. Oliphant, he can't hold on. Tell now Oliphant, maybe he wanted to. Uh, maybe he wanted to drop it so he could kick himself another field goal. This one is a short one for him. It's only going to be 34 yards. And it's good. Just under 33 yards, actually. And Oliphant kicks it off. It is now 30 to nothing. Let's see if I can't find what the score of the 1920 alternate series game was. Huffine takes the carry and he's going to lose three yards. So in the 1920 alternate series game, the Akron Pros defeated the Chicago or the Decatur Staleys 17 to 12. So the Staleys are looking to actually drop their second straight alternate series game in a row. That doesn't count the 46 game games that I had to play. That won't count until we obviously get to 46. So it's third and 12. I won't jump around anymore. I promise. Third down and 12. Pierce back to pass. Throws is complete to Chick Harley, and Harley's got the first down. Hokey Anderson makes the tackle. We have not officially entered garbage time as uh, we haven't passed that point of uh, greatest comeback in NFL history. Of course, back in 1921, the greatest comeback is probably like 10 points. Huffine picks up two yards. He's got 40 on the day. Second down and eight. Pierce 
Pierce hands it off to Huffine. Huffine fights his way forward for about three yards. It'll be third down and six. Pierce throws caught Schick Harley, but Schick Harley runs backwards to the 38 yard line. It's actually going to be a loss of three yards on that reception. And Sternerman will punt once again. It's going to bounce into the end zone, and the All Americans will come out at the 20. So on first and ten, Anderson. Now we're going to get a challenge for some reason. They're saying Oliphant caught the ball. The uh, Staley's are challenging it. Second down and two. Huget up the middle. First down. Americans have amassed 392 total yards to 111 for the Staley's. Anderson throws a dart to Oliphant, and Oliphant gets forward for the first down. Four hundred and seven total yards now for the All Americans. Oliphant's over hundred yards receiving. Throws to Urban. Urban's got the first down. Urban almost breaks it free. He picks up 16. Still just the third quarter. Anderson back to pass. Throws it over the middle to Urban. Urban carrying Staley's on his back a la Mark Bavaro. And he picks up the first down. George Bolin credited with the tackle, but there was a couple Staley's on his back. This is Madden 19, yes. Anderson hands it off to Hillhouse. Hillhouse is going to pick up about four. He's got 11 yards on three carries. It's second down and six. Anderson hands it off to Huget. Huget up the middle. First down. First and goal down to the five yard, six yard line, 11 yards on the carry. Huget's now up to 63 yards. First and goal for the All Americans. There's the give to Huget. Huget straight up the middle. Touchdown. Six yard run. And it's now 36 to nothing. And the extra point is good. 37 nothing. Seven plays. 73 yards. Oh, excuse me. Seven plays, 73 yards. I don't know who Pierce is trying to fire up. Maybe he's trying to tell himself to stop turning the ball over.
Pierce hands it off to Huffine. And Huffine picks up two. Second down at eight. Peggy Miller picking up his fifth tackle. Pierce hands it off to Huffine. Huffine's got a big hole. Picks up five yards. Third down and three. And we have reached the end of the third quarter. With the score, Buffalo 37, Chicago nothing. You know, the funny thing is, is scores like this actually were a common occurrence in 1921, where one team scored 30, 40, 50 points, and the team scored nothing. But also, 0-0 zero, zero was also a common score. So it's now third down and eight after the early jump by the offensive line. Pierce throws it, caught the stinch comb. It'll be fourth down and one. Are the All-Americans conceded this game? Do they punt? Yes, they do. Sternum and again a low snap. Gets the punt away. It's going to go in the end zone. Anderson, he'll get he'll get stopped in the backfield. Second down and ten. Now he's back to pass. It's caught to Oliphant. Oliphant breaks the tackle. And he's over the 40, 20 yard pickup. You know, of course, in my opinion, the All Americans should not throw the ball again. They should just run and, and punt if need be, take time off the clock if they can. But the computer runs things obviously much, much different than I do. Anderson hands it to Pat Smith, and Pat Smith's going to pick up a yard. Second down and nine. Russ Scott on the tackle. Rob Scott. They see. Here we go now. Johnny Scott, sorry. Anderson dumps it out to Huget. Huget makes one man miss. He's going to pick up three yards. 404 yards passing now for Oki Anderson. Huget himself has 97 yards receiving and 61 yards rushing. But I still say Olafans the extra the MVP. Urban comes in motion. Throws it complete to Oliphant and a first down. He's just been everywhere with all four of his positions. Yogurt takes the handoff. No gain. Be second down and ten. Anderson hands it to Smith, and Smith is power bombed for a loss of one. Third down, eleven. George Bolin just picked Smith up and spiked him. Over Jones had not even more yet to invent the spike. Anderson back to pass. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Park Pierce, so he gets a second turnover. He's given four away. He gets two on defense. And you're really going to celebrate with the score being what it is, dude? Come on. It's ridiculous. B. 
Pierce takes off running. Pierce has got the first down and then some. Oh, and he's just picked up and planted. He's just picked up and destroyed. But a huge first down. Pierce back to pass. Throws its complete to Chick Harley. The engine's revving as he picks up six. And the Bears have finally gotten over, or the Staley's have finally gotten over 100 yards passing. Sturdeman on the delayed handoff. He's going to pick up about four, maybe three. It's third down and three now. Pierce, can the All-Americans keep the shutout? It's a completion of George Hallis, and he's inside the 20. The, the Staley's have been down here a couple times before and thrown interceptions. Can the All-Americans keep that shutout going? Huffine takes the handoff, and Huffine has got the first down, and he's down to the th four-yard line. Oh, uh, all Americans first and goal from the four yard line. 7.14 to go in the game. Yeah, Staley's, I mean, not the All Americans. Pierce hands it out to Huffine, and Huffine is hit and dropped in the backfield. And we second and a goal from the three now. We're under seven minutes to go. Pierce looking to throw. Tipped away. Tipped away by Pat Smith. Pierce on third and goal. Throws it. It is caught for the touchdown. The Steelies get on the board. Pete Stinchcomb. There goes the shutout. Sturdeman makes the extra point. It is now 37-7. to And the ball goes through the end zone. And the All-Americans take over with 6.28 to go on their own 25-yard line. Second down and six after that carry. Anderson hands it to Hugot. Third down and seven. Heine Miller on the reception. He picks up two. So the good news, if you're a fan of the Chicago Bears, the next alternate series game from 1922 will feature them against the Canton Bulldogs. So they'll get a third crack at this thing. Canton Bulldogs will be represented by the Cleveland Browns. Sternman tries to make a man miss, but it's tackled to 35. Set, 
Put on first and ten. Pierce throws his complete to Sternman. He breaks the tackle from Anderson. And he carries Oliphant over for the first down. Second and inches. Still he's trying to get another score before the end of the game. Pierce looking to throw. Almost intercepted. That could have been a pick six. As Luke Urban flashed in front of the ball. But couldn't hold on. Third down in inches. Pierce the reception of Sterneman in the Staley territory. It's the first down and ten. Pierce looking to throw. He's complete to Hallis. And we're under three and a half to go. Pierce looking to throw. It's caught by Hallis. He's inside the 35. First down for the Staley's. Pierce looking to throw. He steps back. He throws. It's complete to Guy Chamberlain. And we got to have a first uh, personal foul face mask penalty on the All-Americans. Sorry. First and 10 from the 13 now. Pierce looking to throw. Throw almost intercepted. It was right in the hands of the defender, but he could not hold on. Second down and ten. Huffine takes the ball. Picks up three. Three down and seven. Two minute warning. Here at the alternate series game as the Buffalo All-Americans lead the Chicago Staley's 37-7. Pierce looking to throw. <clears throat> Gets away from the rush. It's intercepted by guess who? The MVP of the 1921 alternate series, I'm calling it, Elmer Oliphant. His second interception. Two field goals of over 50 yards. Three field goals total. A punt that traveled 75 yards and got the old Americans out of trouble. Plus a 74-yard touchdown reception. Anderson hands it off to Hugot. And Hugot's going to be dropped for loss of one. He's got 67 total yards on the day. Guy Chamberlain makes the tackle. We are... Uh, the All of the Staley's have decided not to call timeout. They're going to let this game end. Merc mercifully... Anderson Hugot, Hugot drags a man to, for nine yards. It's third down and two now. Tommy Hugot pulls his way forward. That should be the last play. I don't see why they would call another one. Of course, the AI doesn't do things the normal way. Three, two, one. And your 1921 alternate series champions. The only game that we played for 21, the Buffalo All-Americans. The Staley's dropped to 0-2 now in this game. Oscar Oliphant, or Oscar Elmer Oliphant, being named MVP by myself. Let's see who they pick. Yeah, 
There's a touchdown run by Tommy Huguet. That was a later one. Pierce throws a touchdown to uh, Dutch Sternerman. Huguet just tripped up. Basket catch by uh, the Bills. There's a long run by Oliphant, the 74-yard touchdown. And the MVP, it, hey, hey, Helmer Oliphant. How about that? They picked one of them, the guy that had the one that had the two interceptions. <clears throat> so they went the same way I did. So thanks for watching this 1921 alternate series game as the All-Americans celebrate. Final score, the Buffalo All-Americans 37, the Chicago Staley 7. If you like this series, make sure you, you click save on the playlist and subscribe to the channel. Like the videos. Until next time, when it will be the Chicago Bears up against the Canton Bulldogs, I'm Vinny Vincent. Thanks for watching.